Good evening, I'm Tom Tucker, and the reason I'm wearing this mask is because we've got a Make-A-Wish kid in the studio tonight, who, as you'll find out as the show goes on, is quite a coffer. In local news, Mayor West signed a bill today. <coughs> See, that's, that's what I was talking about. <coughs> are we going to get that, or, or are we going to wait for commercial? No, no, you have to spray it. You can't just wipe... You know what? Let's just throw the whole camera out. Okay, Joyce, you talk now. I, I don't even want to open my mouth. You know, Tom, I haven't seen you in a mask since you went under the stage name George P. Wilbur. Oh, ho, ho, Joyce, you know we don't talk about that on the air. Oh, my God. Did she... Did she just say that George P. Wilbur was Tom Tucker's stage name? Who the hell is George P. Wilbur? That's the guy who played Michael Myers in Halloween 4, the greatest movie of all time. I've only seen that movie about a thousand times. How could I not have noticed that? Good evening, I'm Michael Myers. I have enormous psychological problems, and I'm going to take them out on you. It is him. I can't believe it. I mean, that, that's like my favorite movie ever. I thought the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas was your favorite movie. No, that's my favorite period piece. Well, Dad, and good night and good luck, even though I was tricked into leaving early. Good night and good luck. And good night and good luck to you, sir. Oh, hi, Chris. How was school? It was great. I met a girl, Mom. That's wonderful, honey. Yeah, her name is Lindsay, like the state. Is she nice? Yeah, she's really nice and super pretty, and her bicycle seat smells like strawberries. Oh, okay. I'm going to go upstairs and alternate between hopeful excitement and suicidal pessimism. <sighs> Got to get the energy up. Found it. Hey, uh, excuse me, Mr. Tucker, you got a second? Oh, hello, Peter. Sure, come on in. Thanks. Um, hey, listen, I just found out that you were the guy who played Michael Myers in Halloween 4, and I just want to say I think that was the most brilliant performance ever in the history of everything, and I wanted to see if you would sign my DVD. Oh, I suppose. Thanks. Hey, so what happened? How come you never did any more movies? Well, I tried to make a career out there in Hollywood, but I just didn't realize how tough acting is. Well, you know what they say, tough acting to acting. I wish I'd known that then. You see, life after Halloween 4 wasn't exactly smooth sailing. Once I stepped out from behind that mask, Hollywood gave me the cold shoulder. The work I did manage to get was usually just bit parts that didn't last too long. Like the role of Denise's boyfriend on The Cosby Show. It's nice to meet you, Martin. Thank you, Mrs. Huxtable. So, if you guys are a family, why are none of you the same shade of black? I was also coked out of my skull most of the time. But whatever the case, I was done. I left Hollywood, moved back to my hometown of Quahog, and wound up working here as a news anchor. Wow. Well, don't you miss it? Every second of every day, but I can't touch coke again. It would ruin my life. No, I mean acting. Oh, of course, but it's over for me. That's all in the past. Well, if you ask me, you got the makings of a star, and I want to help you get there. Well, that's a nice offer, but I'm not quite sure how you expect to do that. Well, you've brought me so much joy over the years as that lovable murderer of teenagers, and I want to return the favor. I, I don't even have an agent anymore. Well, and how about this? I'll be your agent. You? Yeah, I've seen every episode of Entourage. All you need is some fake hair and a bunch of hobbits hanging around you. You're on in five minutes, Mr. Tucker. You don't belong here. You're better than this. You're Halloween 4 better. Look, I appreciate your offer, but I've got a pretty good thing going here. In a few minutes, I've got to be on camera in front of 800 people. Good evening, Quahog. I'm Tom Tucker. Our top story tonight, the Rhode Island Historical Society is heralding the arrival of a cast-iron, oak-handled colonial bedsheet warmer, now on display in the State House Rotunda. Okay, there it is. As I understand it, they would put the coal inside of that and then put the object between the sheets. It was very cold back then, and it would warm the sheets. And I, I think that's the gist of it. How much footage of this do we have? Oh, oh, this is live. This can can she hear me? Okay, you you can put it down now. You, she can't hear me. Okay. What the hell is going on here? Is it is it? Am, am I having a stroke? Wait, Peter, don't go. So you changed your mind, yeah, buddy? We going to Hollywood? You betcha. <laughs> 